Hey guys, hi, welcome to my channel. I am Radha Krishna, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to install JDAL. So, this is the second part of this series on JDAL. And you know, coming to the fundamental question, I'm going to carry this series in Linux. So, that's going to be my operating system of choice. But installing JDAL is really simple on Windows as well, and the programs that we write. Um, to interact with JDAL or the command line utilities that JDAL provides up, you know, same in Windows and Linux. So there's not going to be much of a difference in the behavior of this course, but you know, you need to have it installed. So I'm going to cover Windows first and in the later half of this video, I'm going to turn to Linux. So installing JDAL on Windows is really easy. Um, you know, you do it by using wheel files. So whoever has installed like libraries like NumPy, SciPy using wheel files, you must have known this uh, great guy. He's main maintaining all the binaries of this library on this path, lft.uci.edu slash his name and Python libs. Um, you go there and you can see many different libraries which are really famous and he maintains binaries in for windows. So go, go to this library, I'm gonna you know, link it in the description, search for Jira, press enter going to get a highlighted thing click on it you will get the you know tab for it um, and you can see even in the description he has built it with KML, HDFI, NetCDS, Specialized, Pogia, Geo, Sport, Support so he's got almost all the important things covered there are other formats like GeoTIFF etc those are assumed to be built in because those are very very famous formats so GeoTIFF is a go-to format when you are you know building a geospatial raster shape files a you go to format for you know vector geodesms all of that is assumed to be built in these binaries so how do you download and install go to your uh, i mean you install python okay that's the first thing because in this you know series we're going to work on python interacting with gdal with python and whatever version you've got for python i'd say go with the latest version if it is 3.1, go here and check the operating system bit size. If it's 32 bit or 64 bit, if it's 64, go with this, 32 bit, go with this. So there are two versions for that. You download it and then you do pip install the wheel file. Okay, that's it. You got JDAL installed. Coming to Linux, installing on Linux is a little bit tricky. I mean, it's not tricky, but there are multiple options that you can go with. I'm going to show you or talk about the main three options okay so the first option is installing by compiling so whoever want to understand the fundamentals of gdal how gdal works i'd say you know try it go to the website um, where the source code is there go to github this link so you get the source code for every different feature of gdal this is the source tree Download it, compile it. Compiling instructions are given in the code somewhere here in the documentation. You can check through it. Compiling is really easy. I mean, even if you download it and you can see the make file, you will understand how to you know, compile it. I mean, once you compile it, you get the binaries and then you can use JDAL from there. Okay, now we know that's an obvious option. Going to the second option, if you are on Linux, use distro package managers. Okay, so package managers like for example, I'm on Ubuntu. So what I'd be using is app get, right? So what you need to do is just go and search, right? Uh, you get gdal and you get how to install gdal, um, the dependencies, the repositories and how to install gdal, gdal I think we get the gdal libraries, uh, binaries and you can even get gdal, libgdal dev and you get um, linkages with, you know, development, uh, code okay so now we know the second path the third path is something that i prefer uh, by using the conda way so conda is you know a really famous package manager for python but it also uses i mean manages other libraries as well so it's a repository you know manager it works on windows and linux as well um, for linux it's you know really really helpful because you know managing all these binaries has been tough and when Anaconda came, it has been really easy. So, you know, how do you do that on Anaconda is, um, you create a new environment, Conda create minus in GDAL, or whatever name you want to give it to your environment. And then you do Conda install GDAL using channel Conda Forge. 
Um, if you don't know what Anaconda is or don't ha have no familiarity with these commands, I'd say go look at what's Anaconda and try to install some other libraries before installing Jira. Um, so once we do Kona install um, and then we, we have, uh, you know, Jira installed on the system. Um, how do we test it? Okay, I'm going to show you that. So once you do and enter these commands, uh, so when you create a new environment, you're going to have uh, this, you know, when you do code and list, you're going to have it mentioned in a separate environment and then you can activate it. Code and activate GDAL. Now GDAL is activated as you can see on the left side and then you can just do GDAL info command. And uh, when you do GDAL info, it has to show it like this. So it's a GDAL info is a binary, you know, um, executable that gives information about data type and something has to be printed there, not showing GDAL info, it does not exist. So if you are not, if your GDAL is not in, installed properly, you're going to get some error. If it is not installed at all, how it's going to be there is as follows. So I'm, I'm typing GDAL info outside my environment and showing GDAL info is not found. So if it's not installed, it's going to be like this. I hope all of you have installed GDAL. So let's go to the next video. Bye. Keep up with the next series, guys.